On the phone with us today, we have Financial Phil. It's Monday at 8.30. It must be Financial Phil. Good morning. How are you guys today? Hot, uh, Phil. Hot. <laughs> and, but before we get started, I assume you're sitting in an air-conditioned office, are you? Or an air-conditioned car? I just car turned it on. It's a, li it's a little toasty in here, but I did just turn the AC on. So we're, we're blessed to have it. Man, yesterday was nasty. Though. I walked outside. I was like, good night. I didn't realize how warm it was. It, I guess it was around 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock when I walked outside. But uh, I am in an air-conditioned building right now. You're, yes, welcome, you're welcome to drive over and sit in the studio with us, Phil. Wait, 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 you guys, I didn't, I didn't hear that part. You're all the air conditioners out today? Yeah, it's it's that, hot. That was planned. I have to say that was probably <laughs> planned by Rob. Rob's not in today, and all of a sudden, the air conditioner's off. There's probably some sort of code or something to turn that on. Well, yesterday was the you. day that my wife proclaimed, love you, dear, um, it was the day that we were going to set up our garage, clean out the garage and organize the garage. Uh, and you know how much air blows through a garage, right? It was it, yeah. it was disgusting by the time I was I was done with that. <laughs> so, yeah. is this a good time to get rich? Uh, well, hopefully, it's uh, we've got a busy, busy, busy week coming up with brick and mortars reporting. Target, Walmart, TJ Maxx, Ross, Home Depot. That's going to give us some insight to the strength of the consumer, which has really been, you know, the strength of the consumer has been the reason for the run-up all along this year. You know, one, uh, because we continue to spend money but not at a pace. We're really walking a tightrope this year. Spend money but not at a pace that would encourage more inflation. And the consumer has stayed employed. And for the first time since this whole inflation battle began, we saw real wage, ga uh, real wage gains back in June where wage inflation has outpaced regular inflation so we actually see the results of that in our paychecks by and large but so far man we've had a rough august to this point last week we tried our best to hang on but you throw in we always talk about you know uh, the things that we don't see coming although one of them we should have seen coming but the things that we don't see coming that could hurt our markets or kind of give us a step back and we're just trying to hold on and grab uh, onto something to keep these gains that we've had this year it's still been a really really good year up to this point for almost all sectors but this week with the big box retailers the fed minutes that come out uh, wednesday could give us some insight to the uh, future or hopefully lack thereof rate increases and then options friday we don't talk about options friday enough but options friday lands this week and that is forced volatility sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad so we do have a little bit of a busy week this week may not be as staggering is when we have cpi reports and we listen to jerome powell speak and such but we do have a busy week on time yeah phil you mentioned august a while ago been a tough august if memory serves last uh, last year august was a tough month what's about august that gives the market such a hard time man i don't know but you're right last year was Jackson Hole, and we went up to about this point last year. We were seeing a run up through the summer, albeit it was still a bad year to that point. But we had seen some some signs that maybe uh, the Federal Reserve was going to ease up a little bit. And then at Jackson Hole, when he spoke and he said, "Our economy has to see some pain," and man, that sent a shockwave to us that we felt all the way up until October. This August, it's a little different. You know, some of it is inflation narrative and Federal Reserve narrative, but we had the U.S. Uh, credit downgrade. We had Moody's downgrade of 10 regional banks, and that put a little bit of fear in us because if we think back to early spring this year when we had some banks that were failing and we, we had questions about our financial system, but we got a little reminder of that with the Moody's downgrade. Uh, the CPI numbers had a slight increase, albeit it wasn't really that much but it, it had dry or had fallen to three point or went up to 3.2 from three percent the prior month and then a decrease in some of our job additions that we had seen so somewhat of a reversal of the narrative that we saw the prior month that made it such a good month where it's like man inflation continues to fall and their jobs number continue to look good and that is the soft landing recipe that we were all hoping for and all albeit both of those numbers in combination they weren't terrible but it wasn't exactly what we were looking for and it certainly wasn't good enough to pull us off of that fear from the fits downgrade and that's the one i was talking about that we should have seen coming they warned us of that 
way back in May that they were considering they put us on a high alert for credit downgrade. So all the headlines, and I have to admit, you know, I didn't pay much attention to it myself, but all the headlines that this was a was a shock. I don't know that it should have been a shock because they, they warned us on, I think the date was May 28th. And the reasoning for it, you know, the reasoning for it was, you know, look, you're still paying your bills, but it's always at the last minute you come to an agreement and you argue about whether or not you should pay them, and you're always looking for an increase in, in, in your debt. You know, to break that down on a really, really simplified level, you know, if I owed you guys money and you found, and I kept asking you for more, I was paying you the minimum payment, but please increase my credit limit, sir, and I'll continue to pay you. I'm paying you on time, as as I had said, but if, you, if I kept doing that and then you found out the night before that my wife and I were arguing about whether or not we should even pay you or not, and we just came to an agreement just before bedtime, you probably wouldn't feel so good about increasing my credit, and you wouldn't feel so good about my ability to pay you back. And that's what Fitch essentially said. Now, that's the smallest credit rating, but that's essentially what Fitch had said. is like, you guys, you, you run this up to the last minute almost all the time. You're always increasing your debt, so therefore we're knocking you down a peg. That's still a good credit rating. You make no mistake about it. And again, to simplify it on a personal level, if your credit score went from 830 to 805, well, that's a downgrade, but it's still pretty good credit. So our country does still have pretty good credit in the eyes of Fitch, but that wasn't something that our markets wanted to hear. And then the second we consume that and kind of get over it, Moody's downgrades 10 regional banks, and dag on it, then that puts a little fear in us. And then I was hopeful. I was like, man, maybe the CPI report will pull us out of this little bit of a tailspin. It's not too bad. I don't want to over. I want to exaggerate what August has been to this point, but hoping that the CPI number would pull us out. And dag on it, if it didn't tick up just a little bit on that uh, from 3 to 3.2. Now, it's still, you know, most experts are saying, hey, it's still decelerating. We get through the summer months where people are out and about and traveling more and using fuel, and so we kind of expected that. But it would have been so much nicer if we would have seen a 3 flat or a 2.9. We might have recovered what we had lost. But, Bill, you're right. Last August was one for the books. It was awful, and it was kind of heartbreaking because our hopes were getting, our hopes were coming up that that, that that fall that we had experienced in 2022 was over, and it wasn't. There was another round of it to come. But since October 1st last year, even with this August being kind of rough, since October 1st last year, our markets have done really, really well, but not recovered all of what we've lost from 2022. But it's on its way, and without any unforeseen things popping up on us, uh, hopefully that continues on with that narrative of, we can bring inflation down without going into a recession. That recipe is still intact, even though it didn't look too good the last time the, re the reporting came. Those Fed minutes may give, it, give us some indication of that this week. Don't you think that downgrade, the credit downgrade, was a well-earned shot across the bow? I read a, uh, an op-ed piece in, in the Wall Street Journal last week, and I, I don't remember who the, um, who the author was, but that I don't know I'm going to make the numbers up in 2034 the the debt service is going to be 80 percent of the GDP uh, taking your example about uh, taking it to a personal level if I were to tell my banker that sure you should give me this loan but you understand that I'm, <laughs> it's, I'm not going to be able to feed my family because of the debt service but go ahead and we'll call that a healthy economy how do we fix this I mean ultimately Ultimately, the, the, the rust is going to show more than the paint does. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. Yeah, I do think it's an, an earned downgrade, even though we continue. You can, you can, and I keep, I keep comparing this to personal credit and, and as the simplify, but you can, can, you can pay your bills on time and then still have a rough credit rating and still see clouds ahead. And that's what you're talking about, the, the level of our debt that would compose our GDP in 2034. Those are clouds, and it has to slow down. I don't know how you slow it down, but it most certainly has to slow down. I can tell you what doesn't help is the Federal Reserve increasing rates. That doesn't help because the outstanding issues, of course, drop in value because rates are higher, and then any new issues we're paying at a much higher rate, so it's even more money. I say, again, on a personal level, if you go to buy a home now compared to maybe uh, March of last year, <coughs> excuse me, there's a big difference in how much home you can afford uh, because of the interest rates. 
even though for me, you know, in my lifetime, this was kind of the type of interest rates that uh, that I was introduced to when I first came in. I remember my father-in-law saying, hey, these are pretty good rates. Go ahead and take advantage of them. That was back in 1999. He said, these are pretty decent rates. Go ahead and take advantage of them. And they've done nothing but fall since. Well, now we're back to those levels a little bit higher back to those levels and stuff is way more expensive than what we're than what the majority of us is accustomed to on a, from a borrowing standpoint that's what our u.s government is going through as well so i agree with you 100 percent. it was earned because we continually ask for more and we continually wait to that last minute to come to an agreement to simply pay our debts yeah phil used the fitch uh, uh model a second ago and you said that it was because in part bickering among ourselves we really made the analogy of bickering the family we're going into the budget appropriation system uh, or a series of our of, of the year with legislators normally there's a lot of optimism knowing that it may be delayed a month or so before that we have a federal budget in hand this year I don't detect that optimism. I detect a, uh, some folks that are very vocal, and they're a they're number, the minority, but they're still very vocal, and they have a lot of influence. Said so we don't care if we close down government or not. We think the government's too big. If we close down the government, so be it. We'll be making a point. I would think that would play into the hands of the Fitch model that you just mentioned. It, it probably did, and, and I'm hoping that the point made by Fitch has the same impact as, as what our legislators are, the point that they may try to make by not coming to an agreement. Because, I mean, you have to sort those things out. And, and, and my personal opinion, for the, for the sanctity of our economy and our credit rating, that, that that's a non-starter. Our, our debt should be paid. But I, w I wouldn't disagree, not to get political, that we spend too much money, and I don't know the solution for spending too much money. You know, normally I, I stay in my lane with what happens inside of our markets and the ups and downs. And you know, we, because we're financial planners, we have a strong focus on social security that we had talked about on the Monday a few weeks ago. But all of those, you know, you have threats and of, of those that won't agree unless there's some sort of concessions from the other side. And it just continues on and on and on to the point that the last time we just ignored it. You know, nobody paid attention. It's happened so often that we really didn't. I don't think our markets were impacted at all. We just completely ignored it. It's like, how oh, they're going to come to an agreement. They always do. And I think they gave a little bit of wiggle, wiggle room instead of 1159 the night before. But it wasn't much, and it should have been done much, much sooner. And that was kind of the reasoning for Fitch, that and, and probably what you had just spoke about, the threats of the, the next budget meeting. Changing courses a little bit. <clears throat> Again, an article in the, Washington, in, in the uh, Wall Street Journal yes, uh, well, last week maybe on Saturday, that there's an investors group that has filed suit against uh, Target, targeting the, the, the directors misstated its oversight of social and political risks. That's a quote from the, uh, some of the merchandise that they were selling, called, for lack of a better term, the woke mer merchandise. And they're saying that, that uh, the fact that they were selling these politically active uh, items that brought down the value of the stock. First of all, have we seen a decrease in Target stock? Um, I could take a peek and see, but you know, Target is one of those bellwether companies and anything going up or down. I, I Honestly, if it, it has been, it hasn't been too bad. I'm going to look right now as we speak, but you do see that more and more and more. And I don't know what standing that an, an investor would have from that standpoint. Yes, we have. Uh, from that standpoint, it was from, uh, wow, since April 3rd of this year, it's had a drastic fall. It's from one, from April 3rd, it was at 165 all the way down to 131.05 right now. It's high point for the year. Looks like it was about 176. So there was a decrease in that, and maybe that was the same impact that you saw with Anheuser Busch. Although Anheuser Busch, their their footprint goes much further than the United States. I don't know that they've seen such a drastic decrease as what Target has seen. I didn't realize that until you had just mentioned it. I just don't know from a legality standpoint how an investor could actually file suit from a missed marketing opportunity. They didn't read the room right, and that happens 
quite often where where a, a company doesn't exactly read the room and there's there's an impact on the price of the stock. Yeah, I sprung that on you without warning. That's okay. I, I like that. But I, I, I don't know that that would have any legal standing. But, however, you know, looking at Target, they do still have a pretty strong dividend that they're paying out, and they haven't reduced that dividend, and that's something to focus on, even if the market value of a company is to fall because of things like we see from the outside factors, Target, Anheuser-Busch. Back in the day, I like to use Chipotle because it's one of my favorite restaurants. As an example, if you remember the E. coli breakout and what happened to their stock, their, their dividend rate continues to be strong, and that's a sign that maybe that some of this is just perception, and it's not actually we're losing money because of it. And you do have to look at that. You know, that are we losing? Are they losing money? Or are we just complaining? But we talk about that a lot as well with gas prices. Is it just to the level where we complain about it, and then we walk in the store to get something if we need it? But we're complaining about it every step of the way. I, oh, I did find it funny because I was aware of some of the, the items that they were selling and where they were placed in the store, but everybody complaining about it had seen it firsthand. So they were <laughs> in the store, and they knew that it was there, so they'd seen it firsthand. They bought their other items and walked out and took a picture of what they were complaining about. So to me, that said, well, this is, is this really going to have an impact? Are people going to stop shopping at Target? And the answer is probably not. You know, probably, probably won't stop tar uh, shopping at Target because it may be a small handful. But, uh, you know, the, the fact that their dividend rate, we get earnings from them this week. So we'll, that will really be the proof in the pudding. Is it has that hurt them? We'll see that in their earnings and their forward-looking guidance. Phil, earlier you used the term bricks and mortar. We all know what bricks and mortar mean. At least I thought I used to. I'm not sure I know anymore. Uh, with, the, with the Amazon market or Amazon model, which makes shopping so easy and so convenient, what are, are you seeing more of the bricks and mortar shifted from walk-in trade to online ordering trade? Or can you differentiate yeah. that? Yes, they all have some sort of exposure where you could order online, whether or not they have perfected it to the extent that Amazon has, even grocery stores, you know, and, and you can order your, and this is a COVID thing, I think, anyway, just before COVID, I remember Walmart, and I remember Lisa here at the office talking about ordering her groceries at, at Walmart, and she couldn't wait until the one in here in Martinsburg came up with that so she could just swing by and pick them up. Well, now that's just so commonplace. I go to the food line in Inwood, and the majority of the, well, I wouldn't say the majority, but every one of those spots for grocery pickup is full. And that is something new that COVID has brought us, but also something that COVID has brought us was the Dick Sporting Goods and the Targets and the TJ Maxx. They all have online presence, and they all try to push us to that online model because they know that's probably the wave of the future and that's how the younger generations and even those around my age that's the way they shop in order to try to get some of that market share from amazon man it's just not really working quite yet and, I, and if they're anything like our family we may look at something like that say a dick sporting goods hey we need volleyball knee pads we'll look on dick sporting goods and then go find the same exact ones on Amazon. Yeah. And say, well, Amazon can get it here a day before. Let's get it from Amazon. And then we buy it from Amazon. So their, their, their attempts, to some extent, are just filtering business. Amazon talked about that in their earnings. They, even some of the <coughs> outside retailers, their attempts to gather online market share has even filtered more people to them. They'll go on, look at it, and then compare the price with Amazon. And if not the price, then shipping times. And that's really the key, where it can, they can get it to you the next day. And crazy enough, in some cases, like around here, you get it the same day. But that is even filtered more through to them. But those brick and mortar stores are trying to pivot so in order to compete with Amazon. It just hasn't worked yet. Yeah, we, we mentioned Amazon. We have the same thing in the automobile um, industry, and that's Tesla. Uh, Tesla does yeah. everything by online, and it's and the sales are not hurting at all. In fact, they increase. No, and, and you think back, and that was tried before. That was in maybe 2003, 2004 range. You remember eBay Motors? Do you remember that, where you could go online, but it just didn't work because people didn't trust what they were purchasing. Maybe it was because it was used cars. 
but it seems as if Tesla is the only one that has been able to make that work where people are willing to purchase a vehicle online without seeing it, without touching it, without feeling it. And they are the only ones that have been able to make that work. Now, the others, General Motors and Ford and everyone else, and probably Tesla to some extent, where you can go on and see the inventory, and you can see what's there before you take your time out to go, and you know it's a more directed experience where I'm going to go look at this white pickup truck or whatever it is, and I know that it's there because it says it's there online, so I'm going to code, I'm going to go directly to that pickup truck and see it, feel it, touch it, smell it, drive it, but Tesla doesn't seem to matter uh, people will buy a vehicle from Tesla in sight unseen and have it show up at their door. And to me, that's pretty amazing. And it's telling of today's consumer about how we're willing to do those sort of things without the old school testing it out and driving it and beating up the, the salesperson and, and, and going through that whole rigmarole. It, to me, it is amazing, but they've been the only ones that could capture that so far. One of the other dealerships, one of the other manufacturers you know, is moving this direction as well. I've got much more. But very quickly, from my personal perspective, I do all my shopping on Amazon, and I was happy to buy an automobile online. So I'm very, from my perspective, I'm very comfortable with it. And as a guy who, who, who survives on retail sales of, of books, it has changed a lot. The fact that early in my career, when the first books were coming out, you go to whatever your local bookstore is, and books are, are by category, thriller, and then alphabetical. So early I, a lot of my books early on were found by people who were going for the john grisham book but they found the gilstrap book that was right next to it and then well let's give that a try so that level of shopping not just on books but for everything else if i decide i want to buy a carhartt shirt i'm not going to be looking at the the display that would be right next to carhartt in in the store so it's really having an effect on on how do we market products too because people when they go online they're not really shopping they're buying and, and I think That's that a makes point. a big difference. Yeah. yeah. You're going looking for a directed item or an algorithm from advertising has sent you to that directed item, whether it's through Facebook or Google or whatever it may be. It's amazing. So that's what we always hear, that they can hear what you're saying. But it's amazing what pops up in your search engine or Facebook or whatever social media you use because of advertising. And for the most part, it's sending you to an online retailer to buy this online. And another thing that Amazon provides that shopping actually in the store does not, and that's a review of the, of the product. So uh, I, I, I look at reviews of everything I buy online, both the positive and the negative, and make a value judgment. You do not have that and advantage when you're in the store. And the ease of returns. And the ease of returns. You know, how easy right, it yeah. is if I don't like it, if it doesn't fit, if it's not the color that I thought I can return that. So there's no questions asked. I can just return it, and you have a long time to do it. And so it kind of removes some of that buyer's remorse mm -hmm. portion of when people purchase items. You can just send it back, and it's pretty easy to do. Well, Phil, it is always a pleasure if somebody hypothetically wanted to reach out to you. How would they do that? <laughs> they could reach us at 304-263-4343 or stop by and see us with an appointment at 1270 Winchester Avenue right here in Martinsburg. All righty. We'll be back after these messages. Ha 